something was going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. Unlike last week where zero people had signed in at the very start of the show, we've already got someone joined in right this very millisecond and there will be others uh, joining us very, very soon. Um, so here's a bit of a chat. There's no With these discussions, there's no right or wrong. It's just purely opinions and all the rest of it. So uh, I wanted to have a bit of a natter about um, TV show franchises that go on for decades and as a result they end up uh, sort of uh, morphing and changing and becoming something different. Now, ironically, uh, one of the best ones we could talk about is Coronation Street because it started in 1960 and it's still going. And the funny thing about that is that there's a dude in the show, his character's name is Ken Barlow, played by the same actor, and he's been in, he's been in it since the very first episode and he's still there. So he's actually aged as the entire show has gone. Imagine that. How freaky would that be? It's like watching, you see little kids like in Two and a Half Men, they grow up as you get whatever. But imagine this dude, he started as a dude and now he's an old dude and you actually watch him through his entire life. How freaky is that? But we're not here to talk about maybe, Coronation Street. Huh? Maybe maybe he's a Terminator. Yeah, well, maybe. Doesn't All right, so <laughs> off the top of my head, clearly there are two shows that um, come to mind without him blinking your eyes. Obviously, one is Star Trek and the other one is uh, Doctor Who. So um, the thing that I've uh, picked up, and this is for people out there who are watching the show with nothing better, you know, nothing better to do than, than to watch us, to comment on and give your, your opinions. Um, the thing I find funny um is can a show and there's no right or wrong can a show actually go too long um what i find interesting is that there are some tv series that uh were produced that had a set time frame um off the top of my head uh we had most star trek series ironically star trek had a seven year run things like battlestar galactica the new version and babylon five five years end of story pack done move on go home Whereas other shows like X Files just ran on and on and on and on and on, and maybe to a point where they actually it was actually detrimental to their, to their performance. So I'm intrigued, like with Star Trek and, Deep, um, and Doctor Who, because they've changed so much since their original incarnation. And of course, the fans have come and they've gone for various reasons. Um, I'm curious to see what people think as to whether it's a good thing or a bad thing that a franchise can last, you know, five decades. And I'm just going to read uh, what people... You can say something if you want, dude, while I'm still looking at this. I'm going, jump in, I'm going to jump into Jared for a second. Cops actually has just finished its 32nd season, apparently. Yeah, so because of current events. Yeah. yeah, so we yeah. move on from that. Yep, okay, move on. Yeah. Uh, look, in terms of shows, I think they have to change with the technology, especially something like Trek and Doctor Who, which have lasted for so long, you can't... I don't think we could still watch the same 60s trek today without the technology being up to date now remembering that um i think you said that the producers of uh uh voyager said that they got the 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 mini computers the laptops they got those wrong because the technology should have been far more advanced than that uh in voyager um yeah x files is a great example of a show that went on too long it should have stopped well and truly before I think it was 11 seasons. Um, even the company walked away after nine. So that was, you sort of had the writing on the wall there. Uh, I'm trying to think of other series that sort of went on that long that were detrimental. Well, it's interesting. I'm just reading what uh, people have written here. So Claire has mentioned it all depends on the writing and the stories. Uh, and absolutely, that is pivotal no matter what. Um, but I think it's interesting. You look at uh, some shows that change that much over their, their course of their lifetime. And the best example is the original series of Star Trek versus Star Trek Discovery. They're both the same franchise, okay? They're both Star Trek shows, and yet they are so vastly different from each other that some of the audience, the fans, struggle to um, update the way they look at these programs and go, yeah, I'm, I'm following, I'm with it. I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm in the zone. I can watch every single episode of the original series and Discovery, as an example, they're bookended effectively, and, and I love both of them. But of course, as we know, some fans have actually ditched Discovery because they found that it just it was just too different for them. And for those who were around in the '80s, and I was one of them, Star Trek: The Next Generation, which you know is absolutely lauded and loved by everybody now, practically, um, was not appreciated 
by the fans at the time. A lot of Star Trek fans didn't, like, couldn't understand it. They couldn't get it, right? And I was there when this was happening. So the new Enterprise, I couldn't handle that. The French captain, you know, the new look of the costumes. It took a long time for it to find its feet. So it's not like people just embraced it from day one uh, as they have now. And that's Star Trek is a good example where things can change too much. And you can ask yourself, well, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, there's a lot of comments coming up here. So we're a bit behind it all. So... Catherine has said that Doctor Who in the 80s went for too long. Um, you're probably right, Catherine, but I know of people who actually prefer Doctor Who from that era more so than today. And so they would actually argue that for them, Doctor Who finished in 1994, I guess, and the new series, or to a degree, the new series doesn't sort of count. So it's interesting taking from different perspectives, and you can argue, well, is, is, is it good for the franchise or is it bad for the franchise? So, uh, um, yeah, Jared, we're not talking about neighbours and home and away, so you can move on from there. <laughs> move on from there. Um, we might as well talk about the days of our lives and bold and the beautiful then. I do agree with you, Claire. The change is definitely relevant, um, but sometimes you can ask yourself, is too much change a good thing or a bad thing? And I think that uh, um, that's why when you have certain shows that only run a certain period of time, if you're a fan of the first episode, you'll be the fan of the last episode, you walk away and you go, you know, it was all good. But when things just... Um, metamorphosize effectively not evolve but just change that much you can ask as to whether it was actually a good thing or a bad thing so um uh you're right right i don't know who wrote this when shows go that long they probably aren't aimed at the same audience that's probably very true um i guess if you started at the start of the of the series and you work your way up and then suddenly you find oh hang on they're now making stuff that isn't for me that could probably almost be, be a bit of a jolt to the system so um yeah that is definitely a tough one that's for sure and that, uh, and, uh, sorry, just very quickly, and I do agree with you, Colin, 100%. They do have to modify and modernise the shows to get the audience. I totally agree with you on that one. So so sometimes these changes have to happen. Sorry, dude, go for it. I was going to say that sometimes in, well, for, for instance, um, uh, soap operas, they get to reuse the same info every five years. So, you know, in terms of Neighbours, um, there's been an explosion every five years. Something's blown up because the audience has changed and the teens have moved on and the new teens have come through. So they go, oh, my God, an explosion. But, you know, five years earlier, uh, an explosion occurred before. You can probably do that in, in those sort of shows because the, the audience is invested in it but not to the same degree as a sci-fi fan is to a sci-fi show. So um, there will be fans of your, your soap operas, absolutely, right? But when it comes to your sci-fi shows, people, it's a lifestyle for them. And, of course, we're all in the same boat. When you can say, I can remember episode names and characters and things and all these details because you, 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 it's, it's a part of your life. And if you were to do that on a sci-fi show, it, it, I don't think it would work the same way. Or if it did happen, you'd be going, hang on, they're just repeating from this episode, this episode, this episode, and it's detrimental to the show. Um, uh, yes, someone mentioned about you could tell a person's age from the type of doctor they like. And, yeah, there's been a classic story where someone, young girl, I think it was, that was mentioned by someone some time ago said, oh, the, the third doctor was their favourite doctor. And when the, the dude that was with us said, oh, you mean like uh, Tom Tom Baker? And they said, no, 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 it was, I don't know who the other guy is, the new dude. Uh, right? the doctor, um, yeah, whatever. Matt Smith. Uh, yeah, and it's just like it just shows a complete generational sort of shift. So you could almost argue, and Doctor Who's a good example because it was so continual from the 60s through to the 90s and break, and then from the mid-2000s, I assume it's still in production today. It's almost, I know it's a continuation of the story, but it's almost like two completely separate programs. And uh, you wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if there are fans who go, now what, one over the other, but they won't necessarily watch all of it, So, um, which is kind of interesting. So uh, where are we? So, um, yes, yeah, so I agree. Catherine, uh, Tom Baker was definitely for me. Watch it like many. Uh, how many times did the same person die? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Everyone loves Tom. Who's Tom? I don't know who that is. Oh, Patrick Trout. Oh, Patrick Trout. No, we, uh, our, our, well, yeah, you're going old school, so that's good to see. And John Pertwee, yeah, fantastic. Oh, hang on. Don't get my doctors mixed up. Tom Baker's the fourth one, isn't he? Because you had William Hartnell, Patrick Trout. Oh, yeah, John Pertwee, then Tom Baker. Yeah, the fourth one, sorry. Um, so, yeah, yep, yep. All good. Very good. Anyway, say something, dude, because I'm getting my words all muddled. <laughs> I was going to turn around and say, someone mentioned NCIS earlier, and, and yeah, it's it's up to its 17th season, and 399 episodes, go figure, and they have changed characters constantly, and I don't know, it's it's still the same old uh, dead marine or, you know, um, dead guy of the week sort of thing, but their underlying longer stories that occur more recently uh, actually kind of make it work a bit more, you know, they, they're not just doing you know dead guy of the week sort of thing anymore they're doing that plus something else is happening in the background yeah okay so yeah uh yeah greg 
no disputes, you know, John Pertwee and Tom, but all that, yeah, absolutely. So if he's your favourite doctor, then that's, that's fantastic. Um, yes, yeah, good on you, Claire. Spin-offs. So um, a classic one that I thought of, and I never even watched any of this stuff, was Stargate. So you had SG-1, Atlantis Universe, and a web series called Origin. So it was like they were shooting them off all over the place. Um, and you could almost argue, well, all right, if it's a spin-off, it doesn't really count as a continuation of this of the same show, um, and you can sort of give it a bit of leverage because sometimes spin-offs work and sometimes um, they don't work as well. And um, I'm not sure if you can have people who say, oh, I'm a huge fan of the spin-off, but I was never a fan of the original show. I'm not sure how often that would happen. So, um, yeah. Well, I was a fan of Crusade and not a fan of um, Babylon 5. Oh, seriously? Oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. I love Crusade. Loved oh, it. Yeah. Got on the everything, but oh, it never. Oh, it <laughs> yeah, all, all thirteen episodes or whatever it was. Oh, so, okay. all right. there you go. You found one right there. <laughs> oh, you, are, you are a weed cat, so um, yeah. I because am. um, it, it, I, I think it's quite interesting because you know when programs evolve, and of course it hasn't finished. So Doctor Who will keep going like ten years from now, right? Fifteen years from now. How the hell is how is that going to look? in terms of compared to today and Star Trek, what's going to happen post-discovery? So produce discovery, it'll eventually finish, you know, and then somewhere down the track, Paramount or whoever will say, you know, let's make another Star Trek series. And um, you do wonder how these things sort of work. And if you could ever have a person who says, you know what, I love the entire thing. And Star Trek, I, I find fascinating because it just, it changed so much. And to see people say, yes, I can watch all the original series. I love it. I can watch all the next generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise. I love it. That's a lot to go through. And then you go, I've got Discovery at the end, plus all the movies. Um, it is one harmonious thing. And then, of course, you could say, well, let's say, let's go to watch it in chronological order. And that'll just do your head in. So you've got Discovery, Enterprise, original series. We do it all backwards, completely arse about. So um, you would have to do a lot of brain adjustment just to get used to the fact. Imagine going from, um, which comes first? Enterprise comes before Discovery. No, Discovery comes before Enterprise. Discovery, Enterprise, yeah. yeah. Enterprise is first, Discovery. Then from Discovery, which is like a brand new show, like the latest state of the art stuff, straight into 60s Enterprise uh, original series, that would just do your head in. I was like, oh my god, that'd be a hard, hard one to sort of um, to swallow. Uh, where are we, William? Hunt, For William me, Hunt. it would do my head in with the technology change from tech to massive tech to no tech to no tech to going back up again. So, in terms of tech, it would almost be like going backwards. Um, I like that. Uh, yeah, good on you, Claire. You love all of Star Trek, which is great to see. And that's the way it should be, too, to say, you know what, the whole franchise works for me. But as we know, a lot of people aren't sort of going with Discovery at the moment uh, for whatever reason. Yet it's probably bringing a new, a new audience in. Um, with uh, uh, It's very funny. I mentioned earlier about how a lot of people sort of struggle to accept Next Generation. Well, ironically, and I saw this firsthand, people who became fans of Star Trek because of Next Generation who flatly refused to watch the original series. To them, it didn't exist. They just said, you know, I've walked in, Picard is the captain, end of story. There is nobody else. Never was, never will be. Enterprise D, done. Thank you very much for coming. What about this Kirk and Spock? No, nah, don't want to know about them. And I saw that firsthand. So it does show that how when a new generation of a new show comes in, uh, it can bring in a whole new fan base with it who completely – uh, ignore the past as well, which is really quite surprising um, when you think about it, but that's sort of the nature of it. And talking about like we were about Doctor Who, there'll be young fans who have, don't even know that the show existed from, you know, 30, 40 years prior to when they started watching, which is a bit of a spin out. So uh, there you go. All right, what have we got here? That would also occur with uh, Battlestar Galactica with the new series that was released yeah, uh, well. 15 or so and no one really remembering you know apart from the older generation that there was that one season back in 1978 yeah yeah right daniel you're right i forgot to include the picard series yeah yeah i i, I was thinking of discovery because it's actually called star trek discovery is it called star trek picard it was just picard oh yeah picard. i think it's yeah, sorry, you are right then you're right picard is in there so i was thinking discovery because it was more contentious uh it's the show that really upset a lot of fans and alienated a lot of fans and got a lot of fans, whereas Picard sort of just followed through on the same next-gen sort of line, uh, timeline, but you are correct. Um, uh, yeah, Galactica was a good one when the new series of Galactica came out, but that was more of a reimagining reboot. Uh, it upset yeah. a lot of fans as well um, in, a, in a big way, and, yeah, that was definitely uh, a topic for another discussion, that's for sure, but uh, when shows get remade. So, uh, okay, yeah, so Strange Worlds. Um, 
following Captain Pike before Kirk took over the Enterprise. Yeah, I have heard of that, but I don't know much about it. So, assume, is that a new TV series? Colin, can you answer that question for me, please, or someone else can that answer that question? Uh, it's, it's supposedly in pre-production, but uh, because of everything that's going on, it's sort of on hold at this point in time. So, why would you do that? I mean, because you've introduced Captain Pike in Discovery, and now you've got another series following him. Is it the same actor? Uh, what are they? Uh, that's I just... think it's the Pike from the movies, the new movies, but they're going back. I'm not sure of the exact details myself, but that's so you've got Discovery, um, which is set in this time frame, Picard, which is yeah. set a billion years in front, and then you're going way back in time again to this new strange new world. That's you think they could have waited a while, a few years, so that's just crazy. Yeah. So um, yes, and she's a good one. Yeah, Galactic Arady. So um, the Battlestar series, they produced it in the 70s. It was sort of did its thing, I think, what, one season, if I'm not mistaken, and then some wag said, oh, yes, let's, let's just move it into the, the 1980s and call it Galactica 1980 with a name like that. It just sounds awesome. And the thing just uh, tanked big time. It was bloody awful. So, you know, it's a great how you get this idea and you can just pretty much ruin it to the point where the fans just abandon uh, the follow-up show completely, which is um, uh, very shame. Okay, it's Pike from Discovery. Okay, so they've obviously said to the actor, okay, we want to use you for the uh, – same actor, same set, same car. You think they would have waited? It's like, like, what's the rush of doing these two shows side by side? I know they discovery the the current season, the ships in the future somewhere. Um, yeah, that's going to be that's going to do your continuity head in big time, aren't you? So, hey, hey, hey. unbelievable. Mm. And Jared mentioned the uh, Lost in Space, the new reboot, and now that's waited a long time because the only other uh, what was it, nineteen sixties that Lost in Space was was the original TV series. They did one movie, yep. and then they've waited what 50 years to do another tv series so yeah, it's mm. been quite a quite a long time for that general hospital hasn't changed a lot yeah well hospital shows <laughs> kind of don't do those so doctors and patients and there you go uh anson mount ethan peck and rebecca back at pike's pocket number one is like oh my god that's just going to do your head in so um yeah okay with uh with star trek so yeah i don't know it's an interesting sort of scenario um yes whoever said return of starbuck was the only good episode of galactica uh 80 um the only thing that i found quite annoying is they changed the voice of the cylon um Cy, i think they called him oh god i can't believe i remember that um yeah and but the actual episode was actually fantastic if the rest of the show had been like that it would have been awesome but uh wasn't to be um so yeah ds9 and voyager they overlapped and it does work so I think Star Trek from the 80s to the 90s worked very, very well for itself. So they had Next Generation. They overlapped with DS9, which overlapped with Voyager. And it was a nice mix. It had the same production company looking through all three of them, uh, had the same look and feel. And obviously, there's a little bit of crossover at the start of for their respective pilot episodes and whatever else. And it was a good series. You could actually start at the start of uh, Encounter at Farpoint if you could sort of get through all that and get to the very end of the Voyager uh, last episode. And it was a nice flow through the whole thing. So... That was a, a definitely um, when Star Trek was on its at its peak, uh, undoubtedly. So, uh, yes. And then once Enterprise came in, uh, a few people sort of weren't au okay fait with it. Some people said, yes. Now, I knew a lot of people who didn't watch it. And, of course, it didn't go through its, its seven years. So that was a bit unfortunate. But uh, there you go. So there you go. I'm a um, fan of Enterprise. I, I loved that series. It was great. I think it was uh, a little bit different from the original versions of Trek. And I think it worked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no denying shows need to update and they need to evolve, and I think everybody accepts that. I mean, it's hard to even begin to fathom how the shows of today, which look so slick and high production values, how they'll look in the future when we look back upon 2020 or 2019. You go, oh, my God, that is just so old, so out of date. Um, so it's because you know that with Star Trek and Doctor Who, the franchise has been going for so long, you could have to assume that they will continue to go on in some way, shape, or form. I mean, imagine that um, Star Trek, you know, another show, like that's like after this one, after that one, and after that, and it just goes on and on and on, and they've just gone off in completely different tangents. It's going to be phenomenal if you can um, get your head around it all. Imagine a box set of DVDs that's like 6,000 discs because every single show and movie, and oh, my God, it's just going to drive you nuts. Well, re remembering the old trivia quiz that before Discovery, before Picard, there were 725 episodes of Star Trek ranging from original series the animated series all the way through to the end of uh, uh, Enterprise. Now you've got three more seasons, of, or two more seasons of Discovery, a uh, season of Picard. There's at least 760 episodes, so that's, you know, quite a bit of watching to do if you want to do that in one shot. Uh, I like this. Yeah. Everybody's talking about tonight's shows and bloody Sesame Street and Rage. Dudes, we're, 
We're a pop culture show. Get back yeah. on the right channel, kids. So there you go. Play school. Oh, my God. It's like, what are you guys? You guys are out there. It's like, what are you you're smoking a wacky tobacco or something, are you? So there you go. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, but not our pop culture. They go. There must be somewhere else for that. Um, uh, yes, Doctor Smith in the new Lost in Space. Who actually, that isn't her name at all. And Bill Mumy plays Doctor Smith for real. So, which was uh, kind of groovy. So there you go. Oh my goodness gracious me! The messages coming through. I think there's a lot of really new stuff that's really good. So yes, there is. So um, I guess the the only downside when they produce brand new shows that bring in a brand new audience, as I said earlier, is whether an audience will actually embrace the past uh, or whether they'll just ignore it altogether. There may come a time. Right, get ready for it, kids, because it may happen. We say ten years from now, there's a new Star Trek series, and people go, "Oh yeah, I remember Discovery and Picard and that." And people say, "What about the shows before that?" And they go, "What shows? Don't even know what they are." Yeah, you know, imagine someone saying, "Nah, never even heard of it." The Voyager, bloody DS Nine, all that, never, never even heard of it at all, because the world's just moved on. Uh, it's just hard to fathom, but it's certainly a possibility. So there you go. Oh, Pretender. Oh, there you go. That one came out of nowhere. Um, but another uh, great series and favorite of mine as well yeah which and scored, uh, four seasons two movies no actual ending and nothing else yeah so that's a good example of where some shows that we discussed earlier have a certain run they just stop and they just never continue on they're not rebooted they're not remade they just finish and sometimes that can actually work well and you can finish start on a high finish on a high and you go you know what loved every minute of it rather than having doing an x-files thing where they just go on to the point where people they just lose their audience and i remember when x-files came out in the 90s it was the hottest thing in the planet right big time and then as the years went, went on it just like petered out even if the quality was good from the audience's point of view they go you know what i'm losing it now david the company's gone we just don't care anymore and you would have thought you gotta kind of gotta read the tea leaves and go you know let's just finish on a high and they just sort of dragged it out and i think most people weren't even watching it by the end of it so so there you go that's one uh -huh. thing to pretend to start it got really good and then just stopped and it was on such a weird point it didn't actually end on a high at all it was quite disappointing um someone has mentioned uh science fiction is in trouble as a genre i don't know who this person is so i'm going to click on a button here just make it really really spunky look at that don't know who that is is in, is in trouble as a genre i reckon that's an interesting sort of comment and oh, hang on i can't get rid of it now what have i done oh yeah <laughs> oh, no, no, it off. Uh, Technology, what can I say? Uh, yeah, you can say not just science fiction is a genre. I'm the one who's in trouble. Um, it's certainly not beyond the realms of impossibility to say that because uh, the uh, biggest issue, of course, these days is the fact that things do get remade, rebooted, and whatever else, and there's not a lot of original material. There are some, but um, you can ask yourself, oh, if there's a golden era of science fiction TV shows, when is it? And people may say, oh, it's certainly not this decade. It's like three decades prior. So... Yeah, that's a tricky one. So, uh, mainstream millennium. Oh, millennium. Okay, there's another one that sort of popped up. So, uh, Firefly. Uh, yeah. Actually, well, Colin, we talked about Firefly a little while ago about saying and it was in Sci Fi Zone that saying because it ran for such a short period of time, right? It's absolutely loved by everybody who watched the show, right? I mean, it's been forgotten now by brand new fans, but for those who are a big fan of it at the time, they absolutely loved it. And you can argue it's a James Dean syndrome. If something finishes at its absolute peak when it's just getting its legs and it's doing really, really well, that alone can mean immortality for it, uh, for those who remember the show. So sometimes finishing early can actually be a good thing, um, even if from an audience's point of view you'd say, well, I feel jibbed. I'd love to see it keep going. But uh, um, sometimes that, uh, yeah, a negative can be turned into a positive. So uh, there you go. Very good. 4,400. There's a lot of going there. Yeah, Alter Carbon is obviously one of the main ones. Here you go. Sorry, dude. I was going to say that Charmed finished a few years ago and then they rebooted it uh, late last year with a whole different range of actors. And that's pretty much just fallen off the planet. No one, yeah. I haven't seen anything. It was on Channel 10. Uh, and now they're just replaying all the old classic episodes. I mean, one example of a series that I know was absolutely relished by fans when it came out. And it's like to the point of like obsession was Heroes. So heroes come in, everybody just wanted to talk about bloody heroes, 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 heroes. And then a couple of years later, there's like no one to discuss it at all. It's like it got completely forgotten. And I used to, because I never really watched it, I said, whatever happened to this big thing, heroes? People said, oh, they changed this, they changed that. They just lost it. So it sounds like heroes just needed to go for one season. It would have been the greatest thing in the universe. Um, oh, my God, things are going through Jeez. lots of questions. Fringe, that's how I feel about the IT. Dark Skies, oh, Okay. Uh, modern be magic plot and the Stargate SG1, yeah, exactly right. So, Stargate was a good example. I mean, a lot of people watched all 10 years of it. Uh, I remember Daniel actually wanted to loan me all 10 years of DVDs, and I said, Oh, yeah, right. Um, 
and uh, that seemed to do quite well for itself. And then at some point they finished that and started off with the spin offs, as we mentioned earlier. But uh, very good TV shows, gotta love them. So, there you go. Anything else? All right, uh, Highlander series and Forever Night. Oh, yeah, but that was a vampire. The, the problem with TV shows when they have a really gimmicky concept is they don't last they can't last they just run out of stories really quickly so they say oh we've got a tv show where the main hero is an alien from another planet oh i'm just making this up right it's great and wonderful but effectively they don't last because they they just exhaust their stories very very quickly and before you know it like mantis was one and i'm just thinking of this other time like oh, what was the other one manimal and all that they just don't last they just like one thing is if you're lucky and you think oh it's the best thing in the entire universe but they're just going to sustainability because they're a gimmick effectively so and then in the end years go by and they just get forgotten except for nerds like us so there you go <laughs> very good astro boy 60 oh my god there's people just writing this stuff everywhere all right so it's now officially 9 30 and even though there's a million questions there's a million things coming through and everybody's clearly Wednesday night, people are switched on for a nerdy talk, and I absolutely love it. Space above and beyond. Actually, very quickly, I used to think it was funny because it's in abbreviation, it's Saab. And, and whenever I thought of Saab, I just thought of the cars. I never even thought of the show. So uh, there you go. Oh, my God. Auto man. Jesus Christ. It's getting out of control. Um, so now we're going to have to wrap this up because it's nearly an hour and a half. Uh, before I forget, next week, now you're all paying attention. Stop typing for a second. Next week. <laughs> I have got an announcement for you. It's, it's going to absolutely fantastic. No, we're not getting married. No, we're not having a baby. No, we're not producing a show of our own. But we've got a fantastic announcement that we want to um, uh, bring forward and uh, let you know. But we have to tell you next week. So you're just going to have to you know, keep your legs crossed until then. So there you go. Look at them all just writing all these messages. And my favorite Martian and Forever Nine's like, guys, slow down. Stop. Stop. We're nearly finished now. Beyond 2000. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> you know, we're going to hang up the show and they're still going to keep going. But, uh, <laughs> and like, no, look oh my God. Yeah, God. All right. It's obviously been a good night. Um, I, are you guys just typing randomly or actually listening to what we're saying? It's just, this no, like no, they've got their own thing going on. <laughs> going on. No more day with dark. So, oh, my God. No, <laughs> deepest um, anyway, we have to finish. We have to finish up. So, uh, MPS, uh, anything else you'd like to say? We've got 18 people watching right now, and we're going to just oh. cut them. Off. How bad is that, eh? Um, go. go nuts on the Facebook page, guys and girls. Just have fun and keep talking about it. Um, other than that, I don't know. <laughs> it's just find wrote, the most random, obscure shows you can and put them on the Facebook page. Who wrote the Jeffro of Doom? I love that one. So for those that don't know, Jeffro is not with us tonight. Clearly, obviously not with us tonight. With a bit of luck, he'll be back next week. He's not even here tonight watching what's going on. So there you go. Tech of the Killer Daggy. Who the hell is that person anyway? So, oh, my goodness. So... I think, you know, we could do, dude, just stop talking and just watch all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. These guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. To press that, any key. Remember that gag used to say, look at a little key on the keyboard called any. Yeah, you press that. So very good. Anyway, we're going to go. Uh, it's definitely 9.30, so we're going to buzz off. Leave you to it. See you next week. Bring this energy that you got now for next week because uh, it'll be another exciting show. It's Wednesday night. It's nerdy night. You're with us. It's absolutely fantastic, and we're going to leave you all to it. So in the interim, make sure you <gasps> stay nerdy. Okay. Er